Hey Art Nerds! Today I've got another Easy Breezy Edigame watercolor tutorial for you guys. Speaking of Easy Breezy, if you guys are not watching Keep Your Hands Off the Izoken, it is a great anime that I really think you'll enjoy. It's an anime about making anime. So this is the reference image that I'm going to be using while I'm working on this piece. And these are the materials that I'm using. If you're working along at home, feel free to use what you've already got. This is a really easy watercolor technique and I've got a load of other edigame tutorials here on this channel to help inspire you. But if you want to get the materials that I'm using, you can find a list in the description down below to help you buy them. So we're going to be using some edigame paper. This is Akashia edigame paper. I got it off of Amazon. We are going to be using a pencil. Not everyone uses pencils for sketching in their edigame illustrations, but I find having a little safety net helps me out a whole lot. And it's pre-loaded with H lead. We're going to be using the Mozart Como Rebi watercolor set. We're going to be using some washi tape to affix our edigame to our support. We're going to be using the Pentel pigment brush pins. We're going to be using a small selection of Sumi brushes. We're going to be using a white watercolor palette. We're going to be using a cup of clean water. This is super important. And we're going to be using a piece of chipboard for support. You can use any watercolors that you're comfortable with, but if you have the Kuretake Gensai Tombi set, that would also work really well for this tutorial. So the first thing I want to do is I want to provide a little bit of structural support for my edigame postcard. So I'm going to remove one from the pack and use some of the washi tape to adhere it to the chipboard. And this piece of chipboard was scavenged from another watercolor paper pad. I hold on to these because they're really useful for providing support to smaller watercolor pieces rather than using those big Hulk and white color chloroplast stretcher boards I use for my carapages. So I'm applying my washi tape to the underside of my wrist and this is just to remove a little bit of the adhesiveness so they don't tear the paper when I remove them later. And I'm only using three because honestly you don't really need more than that. It's just enough to hold it down while you're painting so it doesn't happen to buckle and curl too, too much. Then I'm going to use the backs of my hands to smooth it down. Next, we're going to start with the sketch. I want to disclose to you guys that I have the sketch, or rather, I have my photo reference up on my computer screen as I'm drawing this, and I'm going to be referencing it heavily the entire time. I know you guys can't see the reference, but it's there, and I just want to be honest about that because I know there's been discourse over the years about using reference. There's absolutely absolutely nothing wrong with using reference. Use it if you need it, use it if you got it. And I took this photo so I have every right in the world to use it for my own personal use. I also want to disclose to you guys that this has been time lapsed about two times. If you're painting along at home, you want to give yourself at least an hour to do your edigame. I ran a live edigame workshop here on YouTube the other night. And it took us about an hour, 15 minutes with a lot of that just being the dry time. So when sketching the flowers, I started by lightly, lightly sketching in circular shapes to help me place my flowers, then breaking my circular shapes down into the individual petals. We're drawing Indian Hawthorn today, and Indian Hawthorn is a five-petaled flower with a center set of stamens. It looks a lot like cherry blossoms or apple blossoms or um, even like wild blackberry a bit. So if you're familiar with those kinds of flowers and that kind of structural breakdown, that's what we're aiming for today. For this flower that's facing off to the side that I just drew, I kind of drew an ellipse rather than drawing a circle, and I just make sure to curve some of my petals as I go. And I'm planning on doing a tutorial where I show you guys how to draw 10 different types of flowers. So if you've wanted to improve, not include, improve your floral sketching, keep an eye on this channel for that upcoming video. Rather than drawing in all the leaves that we see, I'm just going to draw a select few and that's going to help pull them into focus. All 
Alright, so we've got our sketched finish. You can, can just lightly see it here. One of the things I love about these edigami videos is it allows me to do some start to finish art with you guys and walk you through my process. I've already pulled the colors that I'm going to want to use for my background out from the Como Rebi set. This allows you guys to see them a little bit better and it allows me to move them to an area that's a little bit easier to use. So with edigami, we're not really going to be doing a lot of color mixing, but I want to have that side palette handy just to help ensure that the colors get mixed on my brush appropriately. And I'm using a fairly large uh, white goat hair sumi brush to start applying the background. And my intention isn't to get very detailed or very rendered with this background. It's really just to kind of create an impression. So without washing my yellow brush, I start applying green with a different smaller brush, wet into wet and allowing it to diffuse. Now, one of the things about edigame paper is different types of edigame paper are gonna have more or less blending and bleeding. Now, if you're only used to Western style watercolors and watercolor paper, you might think this is a flaw. You might think this paper is defective, but this is 100% how the paper is supposed to handle. This is considered a positive trait and it's a trait you may select for. So um, for those of us who don't read Japanese and we're just kind of figuring things out as we go, it's just good to kind of keep in mind that you may get a surprise. This paper surprised me by how blending it was and you may just need to kind of roll with it and figure out how to work with it, which is a wonderful quality to have as an artist and as a person just in general, learning how to roll with the punches and have a little bit of flexibility. You're gonna be so much happier with your art if you can sometimes just accept it is what it is for the day that you painted it. So you guys can see some of the areas to the left where it really blended out a whole lot. We applied some of that green into the yellow while it was still wet so that we'd get these really diffuse blends. Now I'm mixing up a darker green and I'm going to start filling in larger areas. The other areas are still wet. So with edigame, if you don't want it to bleed into each other, you're going to want to leave a little white halo of paper in between the two. You can opt to cover this with ink later on in the painting. You can opt to go back in after it's dried and add tighter details or you can just leave it as it is. Edigame is a really beautiful, loose art form. What we're doing is we're creating postcards to send to one another, to send to people we care about, which is just such a beautiful idea right now when so many people are feeling kind of lonely and kind of isolated. This is a really heartfelt, handmade way to just say I care about you to someone who's far away. So the colors that we're using for this background, we're using a cool yellow, we're using a yellow influence green, almost a spring green. We're using turquoise and then we're using um, almost like a Prussian blue. Mozart calls it azure blue or azurite blue, but it's really more like a Prussian blue. So it's a really cool blue that works well for foliage. And you guys can see I'm kind of covering the area in, um, I don't want to say patches because that sounds bad, but in stages. I'm just kind of working with it wet into wet in stages.
So as I've mentioned in some of my other edigame tutorials, one of the things I really like about this art form is that perfection is not expected. We're not aiming for photorealism. What really makes edigame stand out is the care, the love that you're putting into it. So this is a wonderful project for artists of any skill ability. It's also a good opportunity to just kind of appreciate the season that you're actually in. So I'm painting this in spring. A lot of these reference photos were taken while I was in Louisiana. So my mom's flower beds were just completely in bloom. But even here in Nashville, spring is starting to sprung. So I have lots of beautiful floral reference to work from. If you're in an area where you maybe don't have access to that, you may want to work from photos you've taken previously, or you may want to try and find some elements of beauty in your natural or your day-to-day -day life and just celebrate that. So I have my background kind of blocked in. I gave it a moment to dry. Now I'm mixing up some more of that cool yellow and I'm going to go back over the foreground leaves and add another layer of yellow. So one of the things that's interesting about working on edigame paper, there's lots of things that are interesting about working on edigame paper, but the one I want to talk about right now is you don't really have to worry about colors lifting up or becoming muddy. They're basically trapped in that paper. However, if you add a really wet wash on top of your layers, it's definitely going to push the colors you previously applied, kind of push them around and push them out of the way. You can definitely use that to your advantage uh, to create beautiful effects or to even change the colors you've applied. But unlike Western style watercolor, where you may want to add like a light glaze to things to kind of just adjust the color, it's not going to work so well with edigami. So you got to think much more strategically about this kind of painting. You got to think more in terms of local color. You got to think more in terms of thicker blends because we're going to need to blend our colors, mix our colors, work with our colors much more thickly than we would if we were doing Western style watercolor. I'm just kind of going in here and there, adjusting the color, working from my reference. This is the sort of thing that is going to get easier the more you do it. It's the whole 10,000 hour thing, 10,000 hours to mastery. If you're just picking it up for the first time, it's totally okay. If you're not 100% pleased with what you've made, you should just be proud of yourself for taking a risk and taking the effort because so many people want to make art and they never take the risk. So even if you make something you don't like, you should be proud of yourself because you've already done a whole lot more than most people ever do. And uh, you can also use this as my permission to you to, to go in and make some bad art and to go ahead and just get started because you got to make bad art before you can make good art. So now that my background is mostly blacked blocked in. I've grabbed some more colors. I've grabbed a warm yellow and I've grabbed a red and I've grabbed a reddish pink and we're going to use this to start painting the flowers. Now if you guys remember my reference image the Indian hawthorn is more white than pink. I really went to pink with this so if I were to paint it again I would definitely let trend more towards white and just leaving the white of the paper. However, I wanted to set myself up for some really beautiful wet into wet blends, which is one of the areas where this paper shines. So I'm going to be working flower by flower, filling in the majority of the local color, as you guys will see here in a moment, and then just dabbing into the center a more intense, thicker mix of the color so it can blend out. Isn't that cool? That's definitely the money shot when it comes to watercolor. In fact, when I'm on Instagram and I'm looking at other people's watercolor videos, it's always like the really impressive wet into wet blends and then they never show how dull the colors look when they dry. So it's like, well, bam, color. But having worked with watercolor for so many years, I usually know the paints they're using and the papers they're using are not gonna lead to a really nice dried finish. All the impress comes from that one money 
shot. What's cool though about edagame paper and these Gensai style paints and what we're doing today is that the color is going to be just as gorgeous when it dries. Unlike with Western watercolor where our colors usually dry a little bit lighter, a little bit duller, there's just something magic about the Gensai or um, the Gaisen Gans. Wow, can I talk today? The edagame paper that really just holds on to that color. So we have our background kind of blocked in and our foreground kind of blocked in. Now we're going to go in and add a few more details. So these flowers are still kind of wet and I've switched over to a smaller brush, but I want to start painting the stamens and the pistils in the center of the flower. So I'm using a smaller brush and I'm working really delicately to draw some of those lines. And what I'm hoping for is that some areas will be a little bit drier than others. So we get kind of a nice assortment of wet into wet blends and then dry over wet. And then I'm going in with a completely different brush so I didn't have to clean my brush. And I'm just dabbing in a little bit of warm yellow and allowing it to diffuse. So while that's drying, I grab some olive green and I'm going to use this to start painting in the stem. Something I really like also about these types of watercolors is they're very quick to activate. You don't necessarily have to drip water on them, you know, 10 minutes before you start painting to give them a chance to wake up. They activate very quickly and that's due to the type of binder they use. Rather than like gum arabic or aquazol, they use an animal hide binder. So it handles more like honey where it's a bit hydrophilic. If you add too much water, it's going to turn soupy. So you just kind of want to add water as you go. And into that olive green, I'm just applying a little bit of our warmer pink color and then allowing that to diffuse down the stems. Since the flowers had a chance to dry, I'm also going in and adding just a little bit more yellow pollen using a really small sumi brush. This is more like a menso style brush. As you guys can see, this is already coming along really nicely. So now I want to go in and add just a little bit of shadow and I'm doing that using a bit of Payne's Gray. Really, really, really watered down. I'm kind of trying to avoid the centers because I don't want to push away our existing color. I just want to establish some shadows. This is completely optional. You, If you like your piece and you don't want to do this, don't do it because there's a high probability that it'll turn it kind of muddy. Once that had a chance to dry, I want to kind of go back into it and adjust some of the color. So using a thicker sac saturation, not saccharation like sakura blossoms, but saturation, I'm applying some of that pink and then using a brush of clean water, pushing some of that color bl back, blending some of that color. So we're going to get a nice combination of blurry indistinct lines and shadow and then sharper, more distinct cast shadows. I think at this point too, you can also see why these flowers ended up way pinker than the reference image.
Next, I'm going in and I'm adding even more yellow pollen to the centers of the flowers. So at this point, you could totally be done and decide to start inking it, but I don't ever know when to leave well enough alone. So I'm going to go in and add more details. And if you decide you want to go in and add more detail, this is when having a very small Menso style brush is really handy. So these types of brushes are typically used in Gongbi style Chinese painting to kind of paint in the beautiful outlines. So they're really good for applying finer, finer details and filling in smaller areas areas and basically just getting crazy nitpicky. I'm also going into the background and applying some dark blue shadows just to kind of add and adjust more contrast. So basically what I want to do, we have a lot of yellow in our background and I'm trying to kind of pop the flowers out a little bit by adding more contrast, by adding darker blue. So we have like the contrast of the lighter pink flowers against the darker blue background. So that's about it for the watercolor portion of this tutorial. You want to let this dry fully before you start inking. So these are the colors that I used to paint this part of the watercolor illustration. Next you're gonna you're gonna want to go ahead and grab your Pentel pigment brush pins. Now you hear me mention these a lot. Really you can use whatever brush pins you like. You can go in with Sumi ink and a calligraphy brush and ink it that way. But the reason I like these is they're really just compact, easy to use. I like them better than the Pentel brush pin, which I used to use for years because the bristles on the extra fine are longer and they handle a whole heck of a lot more like a traditional brush. Not quite like a traditional brush. They're not a perfect substitute for a traditional brush, but dang, they come pretty close and it's such a compact, easy form. I don't have to clean anything up. So it's not like I'm like switching out all my watercolor stuff, getting out all my traditional inking gear. I can just grab this brush pin. Something else that I really like is that it has kind of a matte ink inside side so it really complements watercolor art well. They're pigment based so they're not going to reactivate when you add water, if you add water on top of them, if you decide to adjust your colors. Unlike dye based brush pins because Pintel also makes dye based brush pins, um, those are going to reactivate. They're going to spider out and that could be a look you're going for but it is not the look I'm going for today. You want to make sure your watercolor paper is completely dry though because I did a kumquat video and I started inking. I didn't let it dry fully because I was in Louisiana and I'd already waited an hour and it was just not a good evening and my ink definitely kind of diffused into the paper. I didn't get as nice distinct lines and it just doesn't look as nice and clean as it does if you let it dry fully. So I 100% recommend you let it dry fully. So with this brush pin, I do recommend that you have kind of a lighter hand that's going to allow you to do the lighter, more delicate lines that you're probably going to want if you're inking flowers. You want to kind of keep the lines loose, flowy, and a little bit hide and seeky.
So after I ink the flowers, I start inking in the background and this allows me to start putting in heavier lines, adding more dark black contrast and just kind of delineating forms. It also gives me an opportunity if I decide to, to go back and add shadows underneath the flowers to make them pop from the background more. Alright, so that's just about it for inking. I just want to add some white highlights here and there. So I'm using a little bit of white gouache, some water, and a really, really small brush just to add some pops of white and kind of adjust the color balance a little bit on the flowers themselves. So that just about does it for this Edagame watercolor illustration. All we really need to do is let it dry fully and then very carefully remove it from our structural support. So you just gently lift it up off the paper and then very carefully remove your washi tape. And that Bowie meowing in the background is reminding me to ask you guys to check me out over on Patreon at patreon.com slash if you enjoy my work because Bowie likes to eat neutro and nom nom now. 
McDonald's and other expensive cat food, and your support not only enables me to continue making and sharing tutorials like this to entertain the public, but it also allows me to keep Bowie in the style that he is very much accustomed to. So I would greatly appreciate it. Of course, if you join me over on Patreon, you're going to get early access to videos like this one. You're also going to get priority over all the other requests that I get. So there's definitely something in it for you other than knowing that your support goes to help feed a very whiny, grousy, gray cat. So I hope you guys enjoyed this watercolor tutorial. I hope all of my edagame videos have encouraged and inspired you guys to give painting a try. It's really a lot easier than most people give it credit for, but it does require some practice and some persistence and the ability to continue making art without getting too discouraged. We all have an ugly phase in our art that we have to get past, and the only way to do that is by making art. So if you're looking for more great watercolor tutorials, I have a whole playlist of quick and easy watercolor tutorials that you guys will love. Loads of step-by-step, -step, very basic tutorials to help you get you guys comfortable with painting. You'll find that down in the description below as well as in the cards. I also have a watercolor basic series that kind of builds on the techniques shown in the quick and easy watercolor tutorial series. And then I have a watercolor series that includes even more advanced tutorials than that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye guys!